we arrived here in Juarez last night, we were told that 12 people had been killed in the previous two days. Nobody is safe in this city. It is virtually impossible to comprehend the scale of the killing that has gone on here in Mexico in the last seven years. Conservative estimates indicate that as many as 70,000 people have been killed. Some put that figure at 100,000 or possibly even more. But it's not just the numbers of people who have been killed, it's the manner in which these killings have taken place. Torture, mutilation, dismemberment, rape, and even public lynchings. We've come here to the border city of Juarez to try to understand how there can be such callous disregard for human life in a country that regards itself as a modern functioning democracy. We have about 20 cuchilladas, between three. I remember that he was thrown and he was still thrown and he was still thrown. He was still thrown. On Sunday morning, this young wife came up to me and she said, I've got my husband's body, but I can't find his head. A freight train makes its way along the US side of the border with Mexico. On the Mexican side, a solitary cross marks the spot where two young men were killed. Their crime, smuggling people across the border. Their punishment, death by stoning. Their killers, linked by all accounts to the drug cartels. Anyone messing with their turf is dealt with remorselessly. Porque él, este, ese día no teníamos dinero. Ese día. Aquí van a cruzar a unas personas y que les iban a dar 150 pesos. Cuando este, el, sí, o sea, el día, el, trein, el día primero de mayo que ella no regresó, lo anduvimos buscando, anduvimos preguntando por él. Pensamos nosotros que él le lo aventaron de una loma fuerte, grande. Grande, lo aventar. Y pensamos que ahí fue donde él falleció, que le pegaron en su cerebro para que. Remember being very sickened because um, of the manner of their death, um, being stoning. So when we got down there, the police had already been there and taken some of the, taken the bodies away <clears throat> and the evidence, but there was still a lot of DNA on the rocks. So we we buried that and uh, washed the rocks. Well, we had the, the funeral mass was held in our parish. One of the uh, caskets was open. The other one was not because of the, the damage done to the other person was so severe. Do you have any suspicions as to who carried out the killings? Sí. Sí, tenemos, pero tenemos miedo a enfrentar a esa persona. Was this person a member of a cartel? Pues se puede decir que sí. I, I was told, I, I don't have 100% security on this, but I believe that doing that, scalping people across the border here, that, that also called the attention of the United States Border Patrol to the activities of, of a drug cartel who are transporting drugs in the United States. So the cartel was angry. Hence, the revenge was to, to kill them and to make an example of them. The 300,000 odd kilometer long border that stretches from the Gulf of Mexico in the east to the Pacific coast in the west is the most crossed border in the world. In 2011, 153 million people crossed this border, and they're just the legal ones. In 1972, then US President Richard Nixon attempted to seal off this border to protect United States citizens from what he regarded as evil Mexican traffickers. 40 years later, the demand for illegal drugs in the United States is stronger than ever, and attempts to stem the flow of drugs from here into the United States have ended in dismal failure. 
Bueno, la droga pasa de México a Estados Unidos. La mayor parte del consumo es en Estados Unidos. Por otra parte, las armas vienen de allá para acá. Un problema es el consumo de drogas. Otro problema es la violencia. Pero no solo de una guerra entre cárteles, sino que en realidad se trata de una división o una fractura del mismo Estado. Es decir, hay que entender que en México las policías y de diferente tipo y en algunos casos el ejército también tienen muchas relaciones con el narcotráfico. Y esto es así desde hace muchos años. It's probably the poorest parish in the diocese of Juárez. How far are you from the border? The border here is, from here is about uh, half a kilometer. So uh, the parish frontier is the U.S.-Mexican border. Over the years, there have been a lot of people on this side of the border, in this parish, involved in drug trafficking, mainly gentlemen between the ages of 15 and 25. It's, it's seductive. They say you get good money, Lots of women, good food, good booze for three years. And then you're probably... And then you're dead. Then you're dead. It's hard to comprehend, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And we see in the city people are dismembered in, say, 12 pieces. And they, they, they throw the, the bits of the poor person around these colonias on the streets. It's a shocking, disgraceful, nauseous, makes you feel nauseous. We have been trying to set up an interview with a member of one of the gangs here in Juarez. They are notoriously reluctant to talk to the media, and for very good reason. But we've just been told that one of them will give us an interview, but we have no idea what to expect. Andado desde chavo solo. Mi mamá falleció desde que yo era un niño, seis años. Mi papá yo no lo conocí. Empezó a usar la la marihuana. Y luego este, ya crecí más y empecé a conocer la, la, la heroína desde los 12 años. ¿Qué edad were you when you first fired a gun? Ocho años. Y eso pues fue, se puede decir, como un asalto. Este, yo la fui el que la disparé. Le dimos como tres, cuatro balazos. No, no falleció. Quedó inválida. Y yo todavía tenía mis 14 años. Cuando navajeamos a, a uno de un barrio, este, le dimos como 20 cuchilladas entre tres. Recuerdo que él estaba tirado y, y todavía tirado, este, lo seguíamos acuchillando. Sí. In 2006, then newly elected president Felipe Calderón launched a fierce military and police offensive. The war on drugs became an indiscriminate war on the streets. A marauding army and police force, and even more violent cartels, fought for control of the city and its lucrative drug trade. Others too wanted some of the action. Judges, city officials, local politicians, and a whole host of others were also complicit in the drug trade and in the spiraling violence. And solo entre 2008 y 2011 son alrededor de 10,000. Entre 1993 y 2006 hubo en la ciudad entre 200 y 240 homicidios al año. En 2007 es el, la primera vez que pasó de 315 llegó, varían según la fuente, pero estamos hablando alrededor de 1600 en 2008, 2640 en 2009, 3110 en 2010. Y bueno, en estos años Juárez fue considerada la ciudad más violenta del mundo. Pues hasta el momento de, 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 de andar levantando un, un que otro pandillero y todo eso. Lo entregamos a, a otras tres personas. Me quedaba afuera, en mi mismo puesto. Sí, yo escuchaba los ruidos y eran muy este, salvajes, este, gritaban muy feo, se quejaban, lloraban. Pues sentía que el cuero se me ponía chinito, pero pues si, si no aguantaba eso, este, sentía que me iba a pasar lo mismo. 
también a ellos este, los torturaron, les mucharon la cabeza, les hicieron similarmente lo mismo que lo que ellos hacían, también a ellos se los hicieron. This is downtown Juarez and we had hoped to be able to film openly in the streets here. But now that we're here, Julian, our driver, advises us that it's simply not safe to do so. This is a major drug dealing area and many of the businesses that you see here are paying extortion money to the various gangs. So his advice is that we should really get out of here now and that's exactly what we're going to do. The city centre may be unsafe, but the suburbs or colonials, as they are referred to here, are no haven either. Community leader Lydia Fuentes is one of the few unafraid to speak out. It's here where I live. There's a group of people. There are two more. There's one more. And down there's another one. There's another one. And from this side there's another one. And from this side there's another one. We're surrounded by pure groups of people. We're surrounded by pure groups of people. We're surrounded by pure groups of people. Sí, sí me preocupa que se involucren en pandillas. Pero pues anoche y pasaron unos tipos en un carro y les aventaron balazos, se oyeron como 10 balazos. Y lo que ellos hicieron fue agacharse o correr porque pues es el miedo. Federales, la policía estatal y la municipal pues, no sirven para nada. No nos dan apoyo. Creo que esa es la respuesta que tenemos, ¿verdad? siempre lo hemos dicho. Pero es, es fuerte y es para las dos, o sea, tanto como para las mujeres como para los hombres. Soy Denise Fuentes, tengo 16 años. Sí sé los casos de las chicas que han desaparecido. Han hallado en los desiertos por parte de las redes sociales, ya el periódico, televisión. Por el, en el centro, que es, supongo que es donde se las roban, ¿no? Que porque son voladas. Pero yo digo que es lo mismo. Te roban si estás bonita o no. For very many people, the desert evokes images of endlessly barren and lifeless places. Places of intense beauty too. But the desert also hints of danger, of outcasts, of places where the norms that govern most people's lives simply don't apply. And that is what the desert has come to represent here in Mexico. Places of torture, killing and abandonment and the dumping ground of horror is dead. ¿Dónde la encontraron? No, pues allá en Juárez por venir, kilómetro 58. Ah, nada más para que te... Pues es, es mucho dolor eso, ¿no? De decir, pues aquí, aquí, aquí tiraron a mi hija, como tiran un animal, como tiran cualquier cosa. Sus fotografías, sus playeras, porque ella fue muy fanática al equipo Santos Laguna. Y ahí se la pasó en la casa. Cuando ella se perdió, ella se perdió, por decir de la casa. Pues sí, ya cuando llego, ya llegué yo oscurito y estaba la casa oscura. Moni, Moni. Ella desapareció el, el lunes 18 de octubre del 2010. Nadie, nadie, nada más las pesquisas que se pegaron. En septiembre del 2011 me avisaron de la fiscalía. O sea, ¿Sabe qué? Pues mire, la, le hablamos para decirle que ya encontramos a su hija pero no como queríamos. The deaths of these women have given rise to the concept of femicide, the killing of women simply because they are women. And these killings are marked by gross and gratuitous sexual violence. The number of dead is not clear, but the body count ranges from 400 to 1,000. Posters plastered on city walls, an indication of the scale of the killing. Porque yo tengo una vecina. A ella le mataron su niña, pero a ella le pasó eso. La muchachita tenía 13 años, pues la violaron y la mataron y la tiraron. Y ahora las señoras siguen luchando por sus hijas con la esperanza de encontrarlas. 
y han hecho tantas cosas, tantos sacrificios que se están desgastando, se están acabando también. Que solo en este año 2013 permanecen desaparecidas hasta el día 20 de marzo, hace seis días, 20 mujeres. Y de ellas, la mitad son menores de edad. Y así como andamos desde hace tiempo, desde 93 para acá, que andamos luchando con tanta mamá que encontraron a sus hijas muertas, yo desgraciadamente no he encontrado la mía. Dicen que los hombres no lloran ¿verdad? porque así somos de machos. Pero no es cierto, si lloramos, no vas a acordarme de, de mi gorda. Perhaps the most potent symbol of the young women disappeared are the pink crosses that puncture the desert landscape. Like the bodies that they have come to represent, some have crumbled into the desert sand. Porque, pues, en, desde que nuestras hijas desaparecen, las autoridades nos han dicho puras mentiras. Siempre ha habido puras mentiras con las investigaciones. The dead women of Juarez are often blamed for their own deaths, for wearing short skirts, drinking in late night bars, seen as easy women out roaming the streets at night when they should be at home. It appears that Mexican culture exalts one particular kind of femininity. It also exalts a particular kind of masculinity. Men with AK-47s have come to replace the traditional image of Mexican men on horseback. The macho male constantly asserting his power. At the height of all the killings, confidence in the police was at an all-time low, and with good reason. Corruption went to the highest levels. In 2008, Ricardo Gutierrez, the head of Interpol in Mexico, was arrested along with a top government anti-drugs advisor both charged with taking money from the cartels. For young police officers whose lives are on the line every day of their lives, that is a difficult reputation with which to live. People say that the police, the army, the civil authorities are in some way complicit in the drug threat. What do you think of that? Sinceramente, it's a lie. It's a lie. There have been many friends of us. Muchos compañeros que han detenido por decir este siempre que matan a un policía nos tachan que por algo lo mataron afuera de su casa con su familia han ido y, y han matado a compañeros no tenemos compromisos con nadie nosotros eso es una mentira porque yo aquí he visto cosas que nunca las había visto Llegar y encontrar personas semi muertas, ¿verdad? Pidiéndote ayuda cuando no se la puedes dar, ¿no? que sientes la impotencia de quererlos ayudar, que te afecta, o sea, cómo alguien puede causarle tanto daño una, a un niño, a otra persona, todo por las drogas. Es trágico ver cómo la gente, cómo nosotros mismos, ¿verdad? Nos estamos destruyendo entre nosotros. Do you worry that you might die in the pursuit of your job? No, no tengo miedo. No. All week we've been monitoring the number of murders since 12 people were killed here last weekend. It's been a relatively quiet week. That is up to yesterday, Good Friday, when four people were killed. And then early this morning, Holy Saturday, two people were killed, one of whom was decapitated. So the heading in this evening's newspaper is Holy Murder. So the killings continue. Drugs and violence, the twin terrors of Juarez. But it is dogged by other problems too, poverty and exploitative wages. The city is home to hundreds of multinational manufacturing plants located here to take advantage of these low wages. For very many young people, the drug trade offers a much more enticing lifestyle, however temporary, than arduous hours spent in an assembly line. dulces, 
día es 78.13. Alrededor de 500, 600 pesos. 139 pesos diarios. Explotación entendemos. El problema es que son economías de enclave, pero ahora tenemos más gente en situación de pobreza y de extrema pobreza. Este, ¿Cuánto es difícil de cuantificar? La relación entre pobreza y violencia también es más compleja de lo que se cree, pero sí tiene algún impacto, alguna influencia en este sentido. Lo que creo yo que necesitamos son políticas sociales que ayuden a, la, a los trabajadores y maquiladora a tener una vida eh, mejor y más digna. Former President Calderón is gone. The army has been called off the streets. Very many of the police too. The cartels have eased up on the killings and the death toll has fallen. At the end of 2010, 1,000 fewer people were killed, but 1,917 families were still bereaved that year. And this mass grave on the outskirts of the city, where 758 unidentified people have been buried, in the last five years, is a stark reminder of what Juarez has suffered. A reminder, too, that something radical needs to happen to end the killings here. Well, I see a case for legalization of marijuana, uh, heroin and cocaine. No, but certainly if they legalized the marijuana, then that would reduce the profit margin for the cartels. Because we bury these people. Uh, why should Mexicans die because of the uh, drug habits of U.S. citizenry, you know. A lot of people would be quite surprised to hear a Catholic priest call for the legalization of, of drugs. Of marijuana, yeah. Yes, certainly, I, I guess they would be. But if you're burying people, you're seeing the number of people we've seen executed on the streets of Juarez, a lot of priests I know would be in favor of legalization, anyway, of marijuana. He dejado la droga a veces y, y a veces vuelvo otra vez a agarrar las drogas. Sí tengo una esperanza de que, de que yo cambie para poder bajar las adicciones. Y, y sí tengo una esperanza. Todavía me pongo a pensar y no lo, de decir, no lo puedo creer, digo, no puede ser que a mi hija le haya pasado eso. La miro en las fotos ella con su sonrisa, con su sonrisa. Y la veo y digo, ¿qué fue lo que te pasó, mija? ¿Quién te hizo eso? ¿Dónde, dónde, ¿Por dónde te fuiste? O sea, muchas preguntas sin respuestas. We've come to Juarez in search of answers to questions. Life and death questions, particularly death questions. Why so many and so callous and so cruel? And what most people here regard as so senseless. Everyone here in Juarez seems to be a loser. The city itself, its young women, its young men and their grieving parents. Older people too, even the police. Perhaps the only winners are those who live across the border, those who have easy access to an endless supply of illegal drugs. But Mexico too must take some responsibility for the killing. Its culture, its politics, and all of those who facilitate the killing in one way or another. The only chink of light in the last year or so has been that the number of killings has decreased. Scant consolation, I would imagine, to the scarred and war-weary people of Juarez.